Hey there everybody, it's me Cody on Microsoft, where today we're going to be taking a quick look at what's new here in Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 18305. Because I didn't do a video for the last Insider Fast Build 18298, I'll be mentioning some of the more notable changes from there as well. These are the latest 19H1 builds whose uh, more notable features may change by the time they reach a release build in a future update. Let's start with start. In builds 18.305 and 18.298, uh, there have been subtle adjustments to the customization experience of the start menu, featuring a new default layout with a uh, more compact and organized set of apps. As you can see, there are now folders for Office and Play, which group together some of the more commonly used applications that are pre-installed on your PC. The layout is also less distracting, making the few key apps that are pinned more appealing. Should you want to start over, you can right-click on the title of a group of apps and unpin the entire thing at once. And there you have my blank start menu. Oh, wow! You can do that now for everyone who's been asking for just a list of a start menu. But I'll go ahead and reorganize this with the apps that I want later, because I quite like the live tiles. Uh, but that's just my opinion. If we go ahead and pin one on here real quick, you can see that the drop shadows that were being tested in previous Windows Insider builds, but removed for the release of the um, October slash November slash December 2018 <laughs> update, have been added back for testing. So you can see the shadows look a little bit glitchy on the PC I'm using to record here. However, on the other PC that I've been using, the shadows have rendered just fine. So this seems to be uh, sort of a, an on and off thing, depending on the insider uh, release that you have, A-B testing, whatever, or maybe even it has to do with the DPI scaling. I'm going to have to look into that and submit my own feedback in the feedback hub right here. Uh, feedback hub. <laughs> Just why not? But yeah, it's a wonderful new thing that you can play around with. A new app can be found prominently placed at the top of the default layout, which of course I unpinned, um, the Office app. Uh, the app's design reflects Office.com's layout, which according to Jared Spararo, uh, corporate VP for Microsoft 365, more than 40% of Office 365 web users start their work by visiting Office.com. Um, I can easily see myself using this new Office app to start or resume my work sessions, the at-a-glance overview of all of the Office apps and my recent documents will be really helpful for starting out my day. And of course, like I said, this app will replace the old My Office app, which was sort of nice, but completely useless. In a previous release of Windows 10, users of the Mail app may have noticed, if I can find it again, that the Microsoft To Do shortcut was added over here to the Start menu. This and today's features in Cortana integration are part of the greater effort to integrate Microsoft To Do into your Office 365 life. To Do, however, just like OneNote, is a free app that anyone can use with or without an Office subscription. The To Do app wasn't pre-installed for me when I installed this build, but may change in the future. Uh, but if it does stay uninstalled by default, you can of course access it by using the little shortcut in the Mail app, which will take you to the Windows Store if you don't have it installed, or just install it in the Windows Store yourself. Um, after you've installed the app and signed in using your Microsoft account, the app should automatically sync with your Outlook tasks, which mine you can see right here. I did not create these. Those are my Outlook tasks. Um, and to do uh, enable to do access in Cortana, I can learn to un Cortana, <laughs> open her notebook, go to her skills, and add connected services. Um, you'll need to add your Outlook uh, service or your Office 365. And as you can see, I already have my Outlook added by default because it's integrated with my Microsoft account. And because I have that, I can simply uh, type into search here, which is actually, for me, now split away from Cortana, which is interesting. This is sort of an A-B testing. I'll get more on that later. But I can still use search to access Cortana's old features like remind me, oops, misspelled that, me to set the timer today at 4.30. How about that? Yeah, and I can click enter and Cortana will set that reminder for me and it didn't, well, okay, well, I wasn't able to save that reminder. It looks like it's a, a little glitchy right now, but I have been able to add reminders. Let's see if I can do this again. Add eggs to my shopping list, enter, and 
I have another entry of eggs added to my shopping list right there. Um, the search, uh, Cortana can also recall entries that you have in your to-do list, like what is on my shopping list? Question mark. And she recalls that there are two items of eggs on my shopping list, which if you go into to-do, you can see that those were added right there. Um, add bananas to my shopping list. And bananas were added to my shopping list, which should appear here in a few moments. And there it is, bananas. I have found bananas on my desk magically. Actually, no, I have bananas right here. Okay, yeah, that is Microsoft To Do and Cortana. Let's say I want to add another list here. Say, um, remind me that today, uh, tomorrow, it will be 20 degrees. I want to add the degrees symbol. However, I don't know the keyboard shortcut to adding that symbol. Previously, I would have solved this problem by opening the touch keyboard and finding the symbol in the little thingy over here, but that was sort of a bodge solution that wasn't really meant to work that way. Um, this used to be the procedure I'd undergo when attempting to use the emoji on my PC, but when the emoji panel was added to Windows 10, this was no longer necessary. Now this panel will do the same for symbols that it did for the emoji. Instead of using um, the touch keyboard, using the same keyboard shortcut Windows key plus period, the panel will appear while you are typing. And now at the top of this panel, as you can see, there are now cowmoji and symbols right here from the emoji panel on my desktop PC, where I can add as many symbols as I'd like to whatever I'm typing. We quickly open our clipboard history panel as well, Control X, and use Windows key plus V, you'll now see that the layout of the clipboard is now much more compact, which is better for desktop users who have lots of pieces of text added to their clipboard. Of course, neither of these panels are particularly useful in tablet mode. In fact, the clipboard history isn't even accessible from the default touch keyboard. However, that's not to say that there aren't touch keyboard enhancement in these builds. You probably noticed when I clicked on it a moment ago that the touch keyboard finally has that nice, smooth opening animation that we had since Windows 8, but was removed in the creator's update because of the new keyboard um, technology powering it. Um, so this is a very welcome new change. That's probably my favorite feature, but not what I'm going to be talking about. Something that you can't actually see, in fact. Um, it's not visible, but the hitboxes for individual keys on the touch keyboard will adjust dynamically based on your touch typing. Uh, this graphic provided by Donna Sarkar from the Windows Experience blog does a great job at showing what's going on behind the scenes. This change will supposedly improve the accuracy of touch typing and will be, of course, different from user to user. If you haven't noticed already from my little uh, forte from the desktop that I have, the File Explorer icon has changed. This new File Explorer icon has the same general um, design as the last one, but it now has some more subtle shading effects and a darker color, which helps it stand out against the light theme, particularly the light theme taskbar, which the previous one sort of blended into. But this one looks a lot nicer. Scrolling through my Downloads folder, um, it's apparent that I have a lot of non-Microsoft Store app installations on my PC. Uh, admittedly, some from questionable sources. I'm not alone in this scenario, though. There are a lot of tech professionals and enthusiasts who take to the internet looking for new tools or application plugins to assist their projects. But even from trusted sites, there's always the risk of an app going rogue or infecting your PC. For Windows 10 Pro and Enterprise, Windows Sandbox is a new, simple virtual desktop environment for testing apps safely in isolation from the rest of your PC. Unlike creating a virtual machine, everything needed to set up a sandbox is included with Windows. You don't need to download a VHD in order to set one up. A sandbox is also temporary, completely resetting itself between sessions. All software and files from sandbox sessions are permanently deleted from your PC. If you use virtual machines and Windows Sandbox sounds interesting to you, make sure to check out the Windows Sandbox post at the Windows Kernel internal site. Sandbox, like many other Windows features, is optional and available only to Pro and Enterprise users, which 
this PC isn't, so I can't actually show you live, but it can be enabled in the same optional features page found in previous versions of Windows, which I can actually show you right here under apps, uh, apps and features, this needs to be full screen, programs and features, and the optional features panel. New experimental features can be found in the Windows console by going to the Properties tab and Terminal right here. All of these experimental features are extensions on the work that has been done to the Windows console in the last few releases of Windows, including the colors changes right here. The terminal colors allow you to use a separate foreground and background color adjustment without affecting the default color palette that's set up in the color tab. Let's say I want to make this uh, slightly more reddish, I can do that, and now the background of my console is red. There are some quirks, but those will probably be worked out in future releases. Some more interesting changes right here are changes that you can make to the cursor shape. The legacy style, or you can have an underscore, as you can see, the cursor is now an underscore blinking at the bottom line right there. I could make it even a empty box if I'd like, or a solid bar, but I'm just going to keep it on the default for now. Another one that I find kind of interesting is this option here to disable scroll forward in the terminal. By default, if I actually, I'm going to go back and turn that off, uh, to show you, the Windows console lets you scroll way past the bottom line that you have here. The scroll bar goes on for ages and ages and ages. And this is useful, I guess, for certain tasks, but for, for me, it can be kind of annoying. So disable scroll forward will make it so you cannot scroll past the bottom line that you have here in your console. Um, and the command line at the bottom will be the farthest down you can scroll. Of course, again, if this is something that interests you, there is proper documentation online about all the changes and experimental features being done with the Windows console. The Windows settings is also being redesigned to reflect the layout of your Microsoft account online homepage. Along the top, although not for me because this is an A-B testing thing for Windows Insiders, you'll find your user account profile picture, your name, and some basic account information along the right side. Um, Windows Insiders who do get this feature can provide feedback on their thoughts. If I go into the user accounts and sign in page, you'll see that the sign in options page has been redesigned with a much more user friendly layout than before, which was kind of a jumbled mess. But now you have all of your sign in options listed prominently at the top of this page, including a new option right here, sign in using a physical security key, should that be something that you want to do. And it's also now possible to create passwordless phone number accounts in Windows 10. If I go over here and add someone else to this PC, I can add them using a phone number. I'm going to go ahead and use mine. Um, i got to remind myself to blur this out <laughs> next time. Uh, click Next. And Finish. When I go over and lock my PC, I can switch to this other user account here. And if I go into Sign In Options, click on PIN, and Sign In, It'll take me through the steps to create an account that's passwordless. I can simply use a PIN, Windows Hello, or any other password option to sign into this account. I'm not going to do that for now, though. You kind of get the idea. Launching the Windows Narrator in the latest Windows Insider builds launches into an updated Narrator home. From here, you can access and configure the narrator to your liking, should it be a feature you use, and explore all the new narrator features in the Heading. What's New section. You can do things like verbosity options, here capitalization, etc, etc. Back in Exiting the Windows narrator. Settings, under Ease of Access, there is a new section for customization to your cursor and pointer. You can adjust the pointer size right here with a slider, you can also adjust the pointer color to make it black, inverted, or even a custom color if you want that, brown, blue, or orange, or whatever, and even change the thickness of the cursor that you use while typing. One thing that I don't like about the pointer size adjustment is that the default option reverts back to sort of the Windows Classic um, pointer theme instead of the Windows default pointer that you normally have. Um, after changing the pointer size, you'll need to go back to the personalization and the theme section and open the mouse cursor section and revert it back to your Windows default theme to get the normal cursor back. 
It's also a little odd having classic pointer sizes alongside the new pointer sizes in the accessibility section, one for customization and one for accessibility. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Microsoft handles that. Windows Insider should spend a few minutes when they encounter a new bug investigating it so they can provide more useful feedback about its occurrence. Check the Feedback Hub for known issues about your build under the Announcements. And make sure to search for existing feedback to make sure your issue hasn't already been posted. Being more organized as a Windows Insider goes a long way to focusing on the issues that matter most. These builds can be a little unstable, and may still harbor bugs that cause frustration or bog down your device. Be careful and think twice before installing them on a device you rely on for something important. Many of the features I've discussed will reach a Windows update available to the general public in the future. But until then, you can subscribe and check out onmicrosoft.com for more info. Additional links about topics will be available in the description. Thank you, goodbye.